Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisan of All. And in this video we're creating another simple shape in Bender with a focus on creating something to a set of measurements. So this is the shape we're going to create. And there's a couple of elements here that are quite important and they're what we're going to focus on. The first is that a lot of these elements are quite accurately sized, for example thicknesses. And we've got this really nice shape if we come here where we've got this edge smoothly turning into this circle and then coming back here but we've also got this circle extruded out this way. So that's going to be a nice little challenge. We've also got a couple of little bevels around the place that we just want to be nice and neat. Now there is a purpose for this shape. I work in a school and I've got this cupboard where I try to keep my suits because I like to get to work not just in the car and that means I don't want to have my suit on. I need a place to keep it and have some spare shirts. But this just doesn't work. It gets in the way and all my shirts get really creased up by the doors. Now, it would be really nice and easy to just drill in something to hold a bar here, but I'm not allowed to do that because I might not keep this room. So I've got to create something that is just going to be a temporary solution, and I could probably find something online, but this isn't going to take long to make, and it's going to be so cheap to print that it's going to be, well, nearly free, and then I just need to buy a bar for it. So the main measurement that I'm going to need is the thickness of the gap either side of this shelf. And you can see me being very technical here with a post-it note and just approximately drawing on where this is. Doing this both sides and we'll add this together and that will give us our thickness. So that's as technical as it's getting. The other thickness I'll need is the bar, but I've already bought that and that's 25 millimeters in thickness. So we're going to delete out this cube to begin with because that's what we always do. But what we are going to do is bring in a plane, which might feel like a weird start, but that's what we're going to do. You'll see why as we go. And this is going to be the bit that goes over the shelf, so I think I need a bit of thickness to make sure it's strong enough. So I'm going to type in 10. This is all in millimetres, even though it doesn't say it, because I just like to use blender units, it's easier. And for 3D printing, a blender unit equals a millimetre. Then we'll deal with the circle that's going to hold the bar. So let's shift a mesh and we're going to bring in a circle. So everything's 2D at the moment. Again, we'll see why in a second. And then I'm going to click vertex and then we're going to go for 128 to make this nice and rounded. And then I need the radius. This bar that I've got is 25 millimeters thick. So I need, let's say, 5 millimeters extra either side, approximately. So we're going to type in 35. But that's the diameter. We need the radius. So let's divide it by 2. And that's the size of our circle. Now, if I just G and Y this down, we need it, well, here, but we've also got the thickness of the shelf. I just realized I didn't actually measure the thickness of the shelf. I'm guessing it's probably about 12 millimeters, but we'll go 15 just to be safe. And then I need the space to get a coat hanger over the top of this. So let's just bring it down another three centimeters. So each one of these thicker squares is 10 millimeters, so a centimeter. So that's probably about the right place for this. Let's widen this out, so S and then X, and probably the wider the better to take the weight. So let's go something like 10, and then hit Enter. So this is what we want at the moment, and we're going to join these together. If you remember, I said this has a really nice join where it's sort of working off the tangent of the circle to come to this edge. So let's start here. We're going to have to go into some mode. I'm using machine tools here just because it's useful for you to see if I'm going into vertex mode, edge mode, or face mode in case I forget. It stops you looking at the tiny little bits up here. And also, I just quite like machine tools for this and a lot of the other tools it's got. So I'm going to go in any mode, really, just not face mode, A and then F to create a face. And then I'm going to go back into object mode and I'm going to shift and D and duplicate this and just move that up somewhere. So directly above it. So I just shift and D and then Z to move it upwards. And I'm just going to hide this. We're going to come back to that and why we need that later. So let's get working on this tangent. Click, shift, click, control and J to join them together. Vertex mode and I can start going here and then the tangent might be about there. So let's F. Does that look like a good tangent? No, that's off. Okay, so maybe it's this one here. Let's F. That might not be bad. Actually, that could be quite a good guess. No, actually, maybe I think it's this one. This all just takes too much time. So what I'm going to do instead is just use a little trick. So I'm going to A, Mesh, and we're going to click Convex Hull. There we go, sorted. This is now perfect, exactly where the tangent would be. It does create some issues in that we're going to have some cleanup. This cleanup is going to be very, very fast once you know what you're doing. It will be a bit slow because I'll explain it. And we do have an option here that's auto-clicked for Delete Unused. 
I could keep that unclicked and that would keep this edge here and this circle but it then makes the cleanup annoying and I want the cleanup to be easy. So we're going to get rid of that and reinstigating these shapes is going to be fairly easy. Once we've done that, A, X, limited dissolve. I'm going to put this down to 0 0.1. There we go, done. So that's got rid of almost all of these edges that are on the flat, except for it always leaves one. So I'm just going to have to X and then delete that edge out, A and then F. There we go, fixed. Really easy. Now let's deal with our thickness, the one that I did some very technical measuring for. So I'm just going to E to extrude this down. And from the technical measurements, this was going to be a total of about 13 millimeters. So half that, because that was the total either side. And we've got 6.5. Let's just call it 6, so I've got a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, let's get this shape back at the top. So I'm going to go to vertex mode. For you, that's hitting 1. Once you're in edit mode, I'm just going to select those J face mode, and then let's E to extrude this up, let's say somewhere in the region of like four centimeters, so 40 millimeters. So type in 40, there we go. Now I want to bevel these edges. This is really, really pedantic because I'm not meant to damage this cupboard. I'm gonna make it so that this can't scratch against the paint, and the best way to do that is just add in a slight bevel. And you can see this is not looking good. Do you know why this is not looking good? Well, the reason is, if I hit N and come to Item, I scaled this earlier by 10, and that's affecting the bevel. So what I've got to do is Control and A, apply the scale, go into Edge Mode. Once again, we've got both those edges selected, and now I can just Control and B, add in a bit of a bevel, scroll up, let's call this 16 segments, somewhere there. Now, what this does do is cause this problem here. Very easy to solve, though. Once again, in vertex mode, so if you up there or one, and we need to snap. So we're going to be snapping this vertex to the same height as this vertex. Now, there are add-ons that you could do that would do this very quickly. Machine tools is one of them. I can just Alt and A and it's done, which is really, really nice. But we're going to pretend we don't have machine tools. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to use snap base. Now, for this up here, we've got our snap targets and we just need the vertex. Now I always keep this selected with the ones that I use, so I'm holding shift and selecting edge and face. And you'll see up there we get mix. But if you just want vertex, go for it. So what we're gonna do is select just this vertex, G, B to activate snap base, and I can snap to here. Now I just want this going in the Z direction, so I'm gonna hit Z and select this vertex. There we go, perfect. We'll do the same thing on the side. You'll see how quick this is to do. So click G, B, there, Z, there, done. So once you get used to doing these sort of cleanup operations, they really do take seconds. It's just muscle memory. Then I don't need to do this, especially because I'll bevel this later, but I'm just going to select this vertex, shift select there, M, and then at last, and just to make this nice and sort of straight. Don't really care about n-gons. It just looks nicer. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And again, if you've got machine tools, this is even quicker because you click, shift click, hit one, and it's done it for you. Just saves you some clicks. But either way, is perfectly valid. Right. I did say that I'm actually going to bevel this, so let's go into edge mode, select there and here, and just make this a little bit nicer to look at with a slight bevel. I'll just go to something like that. Yeah, a little bit smoother. Then this isn't going to look very nice on my shelf. It's just massive chunks sitting on it. So I'm going to go into edge mode, control and B, and we'll just do a chamfer to about there. Not all the way here. That's just too thin at the edge. It's just not really worth anything. So we'll go to about there. And then I'm just going to bevel this as well, just to make this nice and rounded. That'll look nice. Now, this is the important bit, reinstigating this circle. And there are two probably main ways that you could look at doing this. Neither of them is particularly wrong, but I do think the one that I'm going to choose is better. But I'll show you the one that I think is the wrong option. I say wrong, it's not wrong. Whatever you prefer is fine. But I could come here, select face mode, E to extrude this out, select the object, G and Z, Boolean this together, so there, control and plus, and then H this object, and this looks okay. Until we apply this Boolean, and then go into vertex mode, and we've got this to clean up. It's not the worst to clean up, at least in this instance, but there can be bigger issues that are caused by that strategy when you've got a Boolean where it's a perfect face on a perfect face. So we're not going to do that. We're going to do something else instead. Wonder if you know it. If you do, say in the comment section before this goes any further, see if you know what we're doing. 
So what I'm gonna do is select face mode, so tab and three or click up here, go to face mode and select this face. So this is the face that we want to reinstigate this circle onto. Then in the object outliner up in the top right, I'm gonna shift and select a circle. So even though we're not editing it, we can select this circle. Then I'm gonna come down into top down view because this is a view based tool. And I'm gonna tell this to project this surface or the edge of this object onto my face. If I go to mesh, we call this knife project. And if I move away, you can see what we've done. It's just projected this onto this surface quite nicely. Oh, it has made a slight error here. I've never seen it do that before. Let's just clean those up. Slightly unusual, but there we go. But not very much to clean up. Definitely not as much as there was before. And what this means now is I've got this face and I can extrude this upwards. Great, so that's just E. I think I probably want this, what, like 35, maybe 40 millimeters. Let's go 40. No, that's too far. E, 35, there we go, we'll call it that. And that looks pretty good to go. Well, we have also lost a vertex here. But again, nothing that's gonna be a problem. And again, less of an issue than trying to clean up all of that stuff earlier. Though that's totally up to you. Now I need to put a hole into this. Now I could select here, I to inset, work out where that's gonna be and extrude it down. But actually, I don't think that's a great option here. I want to be exact. So I need to get a cylinder perfectly centered with this. And luckily, with the technique we used, we've got this origin from our circle, which is perfectly in the center. So what I'm gonna do is click Object, Snap, and then Cursor to Active. Again, if you've got machine tools, there's a quicker way of doing that, but I'm showing you this without any add-ons. So let's H to hide that. And now we've got our cursor right where we need it. Shift A, mesh, cylinder. We said 128 vertices for the other one, at least down here, let's be consistent. And then radius, we said it's 25 millimeters, but I'm gonna call it 26, at least for the diameter, just to give a little bit of extra room and then divide it by two to get the radius. S and Z to make this thicker. And I've got a couple of options. I could bring this perfectly down to be in line with this edge. And again, we can do that with snap base. Remember I said that there's a mix at the moment. I've got this so it can select edges. So I could G, B, there, Z, and then select there, and it's perfectly in line. But I'm not sure if this is gonna make a bit of an extra weakness there. I don't know. What I'm gonna do is just G and Z and just give a bit of a gap. I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference, but we'll try it anyway, and it doesn't cause me a problem by doing this. Click, shift, click, control and minus, and this is using ball tool to make that speedier by just hitting control and minus and not having to set it up. Ball tool's free, so I don't count it as an add-on. Just click edit preferences, get extensions, type in ball, and then click install there. And you've got ball tool working, control and minus will do a difference boolean. Let's click that and H. I'm oh, pretty good. I think this is actually looking a bit chunky. So let's just select there, Control and B. And we'll just do a chamfer to somewhere about there, just because it will look a bit nicer. And there we go, we've got our object. So let's get this 3D printed. I mean, this is gonna cost so little to 3D print, it's on another level. So we'll 3D print this and then have a look at how it's ended up. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting. I have got a load of other simple shapes that we created as part of this series. They're all sort of dotted around, but there is one playlist with them all on. I'll link that in the description. If you did find that useful, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button. It really does help the channel a surprising amount because it gets a lot more views for the videos. And if you really want to support the channel further, there's a Patreon link in the video description. And for a few dollars a month, you can get these videos ad-free a week early and also access to the Patreon Discord, where you get people asking questions or for tips and everyone helping each other out. Hope to see you in the next video and have a great day.